We are here with uh, Joan Cesario, the director of Here, Here. Welcome to our festival, Joan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Your film is very peculiar. It, it reminded me of, uh, of a Picha Pong's films. And uh, it was your first film, and it was selected in uh, Locarno 2020. So congratulations about that. It was very brilliantly shot, and it has also very peculiar style and direction. I want to talk to you first about the writing. Uh, mm -hmm. If uh, you decided to use this, uh, the, the hearing problem of the protagonist as a metaphor, or mm -hmm. what was your intention when writing the story? Where did it come from? Okay, so um, I first thought of the idea for the short film way back in 2016. So at that time, I had just finished film school and I was looking for, I think I, I just really wanted to shoot something else outside of school and really just try to um, find my way um, in, in, how, in how I would like to make films and what films I would like to make. So. Um, at that time, I went home to my home province. So I've been living in Manila for, for college, but I used to live in the province of Batangas. So at that time, I went home for a longer time than usual. And um, that's when I, I found out that there had been a local mining dispute in one of the towns in our province. So at the same time, I was also just getting introduced to um, the issue of mining and how it affects different communities because I was also able to um, immerse in, in one of the activities of a mining community. So they went to Manila specifically to talk about their struggles with the foreign mining company in, in their area. So uh, I, w I was just getting introduced to those things at that time. And at the same time, I was also going through personal changes because I had already left school and I was processing some of the issues I had from my childhood because I, I returned home and all of that. So it really just started out as that. Um, and then I started writing it in 2016 and I finished it in 2017. Um, the idea for the hearing problem came from a personal experience because I used to have hearing difficulties since I was um, since I was a child and it never really went away until last year. So that was the beginning of the short film. But then we weren't really able to shoot the film until 2019 because I didn't have funding and uh, I didn't basically I didn't have support to to make the film. So it went through a lot of changes and. The, fi the final one that I wrote was in 2019. And at that time, I just wanted to incorporate the element of the hearing problem and connect it with the uh, mining, uh, the bigger problem, which is the mining. And just I was just really wanting to explore the different ways in which the human body also relates with the physical environment. And at that time, I was also learning um, I was trying to explore different forms in filmmaking because in film school, I was used to a very narrative approach. So a very um, linear narrative approach. So I really just wanted to learn something else and really wanted to explore what, what else I could do and what I wanted to do with filmmaking. So, in the yeah. film, there is this, uh, like it's a ghostly point of view in the cavern that looks like it's the father's point of view, but it actually works as an atmosphere that mm -hmm. uh, kind of influences influence your perception of what's going on in the family, you know? So mm -hmm. it, it looks like an external point of view, but it's also an atmosphere, a, a metaphor of what's going on, because all these characters are living uh, deep uh, experiences inside them, and mm -hmm. their interior you know, mind and psychology mm -hmm feels like this cave they're exploring, this dark mm -hmm. cave they're exploring. And uh, the mother is a character that reminded me most of a cave that uh, needed mm -hmm. some light into it. And I wanted to know if this was intentional or it's just my idea, my fantasy. Uh, th that's a very uh, nice reading of it. Um, 
I would I couldn't say that it's entirely intentional, especially the part with um relating the mother to the cave. But it's really a very nice reading of it because I really wanted the cave to um act as an atmosphere and also what you said um it's the point of view it's like a ghostly point of view of the father but at the same time it also represents the human body and how it resembles the ear and how it resembles koi's ear and how it connects to his hearing problem but at the same time how it also connects to the family and to the entire community so I wouldn't say that it's entirely intentional, especially the part about the mother, but it's definitely um, in line with, with the idea. So, yeah. And what about the forest where the two uh, young guys go and talk about their issues? Uh, well, well um, I, wanted, I really wanted to include uh, that part because it's... Um, I wanted to show a visual representation of the the mountain or the the actual area, um, and not just situate the entire film indoors. So um, I really wanted to include that and just show how it how the mining company and how all of the changes in in the hometown has affected everyone in the community. So I, I really wanted to shoot um, outside of their own homes and really just give uh, a, a, an atmosphere, atmosphere of the entire community and just situate it in the, in the actual hometown. And um, I wanted to ask you how, how you built the language of the film, you know? The, the lenses that you used. I'm, I'm particularly curious about the cinematography of the forest scenes. Uh, where they walk, um, there are all these kind of lens flares and effects. And uh, I'm very curious because uh, I cannot imagine, since we're so far from each other, how you produce a film like this in, in the Philippines and mm -hmm. uh, what kind of you know, camera and lenses that you used and how you actually managed to find all the equipment that was necessary to your, your experimentation. So I think um, shooting in the Philippines or just creating in the Philippines in general requires a lot of improvisation because um, we don't really have um, access to enough resources. So it, first of all, the, um, the grant that I received from a local film festival, it wasn't really sufficient for, for what the material entails. So first of all, we had to um, acquire funds from friends and relatives, and we had to set up a crowdfunding page. Um, so the equipment, we it was a mixture of um, borrowing from friends and people we know, and also renting um, some equipment that were available and within reach. But then I would really say that it took a lot of improvisation on our part. So for example, the forest scene, we, ha we had to do a lot of trial and error. So we went in, we went to the location, we had an ocular and then we tried shooting. And then we also tried shooting in other locations that resembled the area, although not very close, just really to see how we could situate the characters. And we tried on a lot of different lenses. So what worked was that we used um, a filter. It was a lens filter that um, when, when you put it on, it sort of puts like a, a haze over the, mm -hmm. the camera lens. So we decided to use that and really just to explore that since you're not really able to acquire some of the lenses that we originally wanted to um to shoot with but then yeah we had to improvise with that and also with the other parts so the first sequence the cave we also had to build um a tiny setup where we had to put the light directly above the, the camera mm. so we used a rig uh, an improvised rig to put to put that uh, above the camera and it's also not um it's not a professional light so we we just tweaked a flashlight. We played around with the flashlight and we tried 
um, what light we could use, what was the strongest light that we could possibly use. So yeah, I think overall just having to improvise and then just having to test and then making mistakes along the way. So that's really just how we got that. So it's artisanal, like we like it uh, in our festival. And uh, one last question. In, uh, in one scene, uh, the female young character talks about the violence she, uh, she had to go through uh, in the family. And in some way, th these characters are all, um, have all some kind of issues about you know, uh, being open to other characters uh, in the family or uh, suppressing violence or suppressing emotions. And I wanted to know how is the uh, culture of family in the Philippines, if it's common you know, to have this kind of communication issues and how, how is family usually in the yeah. Philippines? Um, it's, I, I would say it's the strongest unit in the Philippines. So um, the family usually dictates a lot of um, how we live our lives and it, 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 it's really it's really the strongest unit it's it's where your values are formed it's where your consciousness is formed so um, it plays a very big role in um, in our society so what I actually wanted to do in that part was to also give um, a context to their struggles so although it might seem like a personal and a familial um, issue or struggle it's something that um, resonates with the entire community and it's something that's also affected by the changes in the community particularly the mining and just being um, and just having the mining community uh, the mining company um, take over the community so um, the violence that uh, the female lead was experiencing um, is also a reflection of the violence that the company is doing to the community and to the environment so i i wanted it also to be a reflection of that aside from it being um, something enclosed within the family structure thank you very much and what are you going to do now are you got another project that is ongoing or um not yet not right now so i i have other stuff that i'm busy with right now but Hopefully, in the near future, I would want to maybe make another short film, uh, maybe a short doc. So that's my future plan. So, Joan, thank you for, uh, for being with us, for answering my questions. Uh, I hope that the jury and the public will love your short as much as I did. And, uh, thank you. Also, uh, see you next year or uh, whenever you want to come in Rome and join us. Yeah, I, I wish it, it wasn't the pandemic right now and we could all be together. But yeah, maybe next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care.